If you love liberty, declare your independence by signing the Shire Society Declaration at ShireSociety.com. Thomas Jefferson talked about the consent of the governed. And mostly the people here and a lot of the people we've met all over the state, we don't consent uh, to a form of government where a governor just takes over and orders us around and tells us if we can do business or not, if we can go to church or not, if we can eat at a restaurant or not. But the main thing we're here about today is how do we make it so that this never happens again? You know, we, um, there's a lot of people here that actually before this whole disease scare um, never really came out to the state house and protested anything. And we thought that's what other people did. That's what those crazy people did. And hey, I'm sitting here at home in my lazy boy, um, you know, I'm comfortable. Why should I go out on a kind of a cool fall day and uh, stand around and, uh, you know, yell, yell at the moon, you know. But um, I think the people that have come here now realize that we have to. This, our survival is at stake, our survival as a free people. If we don't, if we don't put a stop to this, if we don't keep it from ever happening again, we're doomed to some of the horror, horror stories we've seen in the history books. So let's don't let that happen to us, to our kids, to our grandkids. We have several other people that are gonna come up. Again, my name is Jack, I'm with the Health Freedom Group. There's several other groups that are represented here. He's a, a state rep. Uh, Tony and his wife are both state reps. I've known him for probably about 15 years or so, and I have no idea what he's gonna say, but I'm sure it's gonna be good. There you go, Tony. Thank you. Um, just a few things. One is, um, as you said, I'm a state rep, and uh, my wife, Alicia Lekas, and some other reps did introduce a uh, resolution on June the 11th to effectively end the restrictions. And unfortunately, it was crushed, you know, 57 to 280 in the House. So um, there are a number of reps who will be introducing bills for next year to, uh, to restrict the statute that grants the governor certain powers under a state of emergency and to restrict uh, some of the powers that Health and Human Services has related to infectious diseases. The Democrats, at least in the House, have been, uh, you know, lockstep on maintaining the restrictions. So if they get the majority again, making any change in this is probably hopeless. So that's number one is, is you know, get after your reps and, and vote accordingly. But the other thing then is having a large number of people show up in support of the bills to uh, restrict this stuff when they uh, have hearings, probably January, February, possibly March next year will be important and I'll, I'll work with, you know, Reopen New Hampshire, we'll get the, uh, let, get the word out to let people know. Okay, thank you. If you have any questions, just ask me privately. Email the governor, email the boards in your city, et cetera, et cetera. Show up to the meetings, the town halls, even the virtual ones. Um, you know, we were ready to tear down the doors in Manchester and we told them that's what was gonna happen if they did pass it. We we're gonna occupy the whole building until we turned it back. So they didn't want that. And, you know, so they said no. And we got more votes against them than we thought we were going to. So it can be done, right? It just takes some perseverance and look at like what we just dealt with, with these security guards telling us like the same thing happened in Manchester. You can't hang the flags. Well, why not? They can't articulate themselves. First Amendment, freedom of expression, and the right to petition the government for redress does not have a clause in there for a permit. We don't need a permit, right? So here we are, and these flags wouldn't be there unless we were absolutely defiant. And it doesn't take violence. It just says, no, do what you gotta do, get somebody else here. And maybe if they do show up, or if they did show up, I would have got arrested, but they didn't. And that's another thing, and a key point here, is people do need to be willing to, you know, get arrested, get fined, and then get these things in court, right? Like Rochelle did, bringing her kids to the park, right? Gets arrested for bringing her kids to the park. I mean, she's a superhero, Wonder Woman. 
It's amazing. Give her another round of applause. So this is what it takes and not being nice about it and just calling a spade a spade and, and, and saying what it is and not being afraid to ruffle some feathers and, and get people upset because that's what we need and we have a right to be upset, right? We should be upset, okay? So it's time to take this state back and you know, I said it before a couple times but I'll say it again right now, we might have to take this state house back by force, okay? 100%. And it, I'm not saying violence, but it takes boots on the ground to show up. And it won't take that many to get in there like happened in Michigan. Right? So, yeah. It's about to go down here at the State House. So who's next? Got nobody. <laughs> well, my name is Nobody. I'm here representing uh, Free Keen and uh, Free Talk Live and, uh, and nobody. <laughs> and uh, there's a... I always come back to the second paragraph of the Declaration of Independence, the uh, self-evident truths that Thomas Jefferson enumerated that we have four basic rights that he laid out for us, and it only takes four. We have the right to life. We have the right to liberty. We have the right to pursuit of happiness, and we have the right, when those rights are violated, to alter or abolish the government that has violated them. And this time is coming. Now what is the right to liberty? In a private letter, Jefferson wrote that rightful liberty was unobstructed action according to our will, bounded only by the equal rights of others. And he added, I do not say within the limits of the law, because the law is often but the tyrant's will, and always so when it violates the rights of the individual. There is only one person that has exactly your set of values. Your values are as unique to you as your fingerprint. And nobody, therefore, can make a decision on risk for you except you without violating your values. Nobody else knows what things are worth to you but you. And you have every right to risk your life, whether it's by jumping out of a perfectly good airplane, or smoking cigarettes, or smoking weed, or doing any other thing that you think is important even if the rest of the world thinks you're nuts. And that has been forgotten in America today. There's one battlefield though that, uh, that Jack Schimmick didn't mention and that battlefield is cyberspace for lack of a better word, although I kind of hate that term. The big data is suppressing our message. They are doing it deliberately. They are doing it almost openly. And it needs to stop. I think that big data has been the, the largest obstacle in the way of getting these uh, protests as big and as loud as they need to be because there are a lot of angry people out there. There are a lot of people, even people who are wearing masks because they're afraid of their neighbors or because they're afraid of the government. But I say to them, do you know anybody who's sick? And they say, no. And I say, doesn't that seem a little strange to you? And they say, yeah, but 
I wasn't gonna say anything. Seems to make sense to everybody else. So I thought I was crazy. And, uh, well, you gotta be a little bit crazy when your neighbors are brainwashed. Because being crazy just means dis disagreeing with the majority of your neighbors. So I'm, I'm advising y'all to, uh, to get on new social media, get on social media that will not block what you want to say and, uh, and transplant things back and forth, transplant ideas back and forth between the big boys like Facebook and Twitter and the, and the freedom platforms like me, we float Telegram. Uh, the other thing I'm going to suggest is uh, every night from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. there's a show called Free Talk Live. It's, uh, it's archived on YouTube.com. Check it out. We're talking about liberty every night. We're talking about this situation every night. And if there are protests you haven't heard about, you will hear about them if you listen to us. And I agree with Footloose that there may come a time when we have to fight. Because the, uh, if, if we let them take our liberty, they will. Frederick Douglass said, and Frederick Douglass was a great man. He was an escaped slave. He came to the north. He became an orator and, uh, and an uh, a advocate of liberty for all men. And he said that power never yields without a demand. And that demand must be delivered with words or with blows or with both. And he says that the limit of the power of tyrants and the limit of tyranny is the limit of the patience of those they oppress. It is time to lose our patience. Thank you, thank you for showing up and please help spread the word. There's a lot of people who would be here if they knew that this was happening tonight. And we've got to find new ways to, free, to spread the message. Thank you. Well, you can't, you can't say that nobody has nothing to say. I'm going to introduce you to Thomas McLeod. Here you go, Thomas. Career guy. Yeah! yeah. That's right. So, on November 3rd, what's going to happen? Rigged election! <laughs> How many people have voted or intend to vote? Just... Great. So, before an election, it's time to take stock of where we are as a state and where we are as a country. Right now, we have what they call a health emergency. We have a virus. There definitely is a virus. It is sickening people. It is killing some people. But what we also have is two whole branches of our government that are effectively sidelines. And what we also have is censorship in the United States of America the way we've never seen it before. We have faceless uh, medical elites, billionaires, that seem to be pulling the strings behind, uh, behind the curtain. And we have false statistics that we know are, are manipulated. They've admitted that they've uh, manipulated them, but the media reports on them anyway. A lot of people don't know is that after the, uh, the, the big Nuremberg trials, there were a series of smaller trials uh, that were run by the United States Army. And one of, the, one of them was called the doctor's trial. And the, the United States Army rounded up all the, um, the Nazi doctors who had conducted the horrible experiments 
Unfortunately, the, uh, the most evil ones actually got away, but the ones that they did get were tried. And during the trial, uh, the, the Nazi doctors raised the defense of our case, uh, Jacobson versus Massachusetts, and they raised the ca they raised the precedent of some of the other follow-on cases. One of the uh, most notorious one was uh, the case that allowed um, for forced uh, sterilization. Um, so. These doctors and their defense counsel raised these cases, and it looked like for a short period of time that many of them would actually be acquitted based on American law. So what happened was that uh, the U.S. Army contacted the AMA, and the AMA contacted medical ethicists in the United States and sent some over to Nuremberg in Germany, and they, they hashed out with the prosecution what we now know to be the Nuremberg Code. And the Nuremberg Code became the standard by which the Nazi doctors were judged and most of them were convicted. But I'm here today to tell you that the Nuremberg Code is not law in the United States. There is no law that specifically prohibits state health authorities from forced vaccinating you. There's no law that prohibits state health authorities from collecting your private data and using it for any purpose they want. Uh, for instance, in Vermont, the data is collected and it's used for political purposes to analyze the political opinions of non-vaccinators. So <clears throat> bringing it back down to uh, right now, we have um, formed a new organization. It's called the Liberty Defense Fund in New Hampshire. And because many of the problems we have around health freedom are, and, and, uh, and liberty in general are health, uh, are legal issues, uh, this, this organization um, hopefully will uh, have a long and illustrious uh, existence. But it's just getting started. I would like to ask uh, everyone here uh, to go to uh, ldfnh.org, and you can do it right now, and uh, make a donation. I want to thank everyone for coming out on uh, a cool um, night before a very important election. Thank you. Uh, bring a young guy up to the microphone who's spoken at a couple of rallies before uh, to, to say how it's affected him as a college student. So I'm going to bring up Vincent. Come on up. All right, well, hello, everyone. Thank you. I'll keep it, uh, I'll keep it brief. You know, it's chilly, and in case uh, any of you didn't know, there's a pandemic going around, so I don't want anyone to get sick here. Uh, well, too soon, too soon. Um, so uh, my name is Vincent. I'm part of the... I, uh, gra I, graduated even though you know I didn't get a ceremony from the class of 2020 and I don't know if that is a, if I should say that's an honor or a dishonor because on one end it's unfortunate because I had my we as in the class of 2020 had our senior years ruined and we're all entering what's probably the worst job market in the country's history but on the other end I, I could say that I have an honor of being part of a class of 2020 because the way things are going this is going to be the last college class, at least in the United States, that knows what it's like to experience the college experience in relative freedom, right? Being able to walk on campus and go into dorms and visit friends, right, without wearing a mask. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I might sound a little bit nervous because I actually graduated with a multimedia journalism degree, so I'm actually used to being behind the camera. But uh, things have just gotten so bad, and there's just so much of our freedom at stake that uh, I just had to um, do something else. And that's why I'm glad we didn't begin with a moment of silence, because far too many people have been silent for too long. Uh, yes. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, okay, it's not that brief, it's not that brief, but... Um, so, despite... Despite what we're going through... Oh, excuse me. Um, it's, it's dark, it's hard to read. Um, now... We're, 
I feel bad for the classes after me because they not only have to struggle with the depression, the isolation, the anxiety that unfortunately so many people of my age have had to deal with even before the pandemic. But on top of that, they have to deal with this ludicrous control, you know, control freak power move, mask mandate, social distancing mandates. Are you depressed? Are you lonely? Oh, better stay six feet away. Do you need warmth? Are you devastated inside? Are you depressed? Oh, where's your mask? You gotta put on your mask. And I think the most insidious part about all of this, the people who lead us, right, the people that most of us trust to take care of us, what's worse is they're saying that this is the new normal. And uh, the thing is, wh when you're my age, the only thing you want to be is normal, right? The worst thing is possible in high school, in college, is being not normal. And so we're adding this level of emotional blackmail. And, it's, it, and I just want to say, you know, and it's unfortunate that there's not more people my age coming out and speaking out, but um, that just shows how good the indoctrination is. But for anyone my age listening, anyone in the class below me, um, still if you're in high school, if you're in college, if you're in junior high, if you're in pre-k, if you're in elementary school, I just want everyone to know that it is not normal to stay away from your loved ones because you're afraid, even if you have two healthy people, because you're afraid of getting sick. It's not normal seeing people, or not, excuse me, not seeing people's faces wearing masks. What is normal is for the criminals, tyrants, and abusers to use fear and lies to control all of us. Yeah. Yeah. And I used to be afraid. I used to be afraid, but not anymore. I'm not afraid of a virus I'm not, that could destroy my body. I'm not afraid of a government that could destroy my body. I'm afraid of a one who can destroy my body and my soul, and that is the Lord God above. And he sent his only son, Jesus, down to earth so that none of us can be afraid ever again. Thank you everyone so much for coming here. And uh, you, so I ran across this young man, Quinn, who's been in Manchester, been active there. Come on up, Quinn. It is an assault on the triad of our very being. Our minds, our bodies, and our spirits. What brings us here together today is our belief in the sanctity of the individual body. We believe in the principle of self-ownership, that all, pr the entire property norm we cherish in our worldview derives solely from the property we have in our own bodies. If you don't have the ability to decide for yourself what goes into your body to make medical decisions for you and your loved ones, if one person who happens to be privileged enough to have found their way to a badge in a fancy hat or a lab coat gets to decide on the basis of test science that they can inject a completely untested um, vaccine like the one under development now into you under threat of imprisonment or fines which under these current economic conditions by themselves could be ruinous what you have nothing. You are a slave. Thanks for coming out and staying out in the dark. You need to have dark so we can shine a light for these people that we've lost during uh, this time. Um, you know, I can't believe that we were standing here in April and uh, we were thinking, you know, we'd have a few rallies. The governor would uh, see that people are opposed to what he was doing and we'd go back to normal. And, and what uh, the, the gentleman who spoke before me made very clear is that there's another agenda uh, going on here, and I agree with what he said. Um, I, you know, what, what I want to say about it is that this agenda is something that we can and ought to and must uh, oppose with every fiber of our being. You know, we need to tell our friends and family to get involved as well. Tell them to take the mask off. It is doing more harm than good. It actually causes the virus to spread. It doesn't prevent it spread. It causes it to spread. So the other thing that I want to tell you about is the people who we've lost. We, we have lost some people to COVID. COVID's a real virus. I don't, I'm not saying it's fake. It's a real virus. It's just, it's no longer a, a factor. Um, 
is long gone. And we did lose some people to, to, to COVID and or the treatments to COVID. Um, and, but we know that a lot of people died of COVID who, who really didn't because the government was giving uh, quite a bit of money to hospitals for every COVID death. And, and money uh, influences quite a bit. You know all this stuff, so I'm going to skip past the rest. But what I want to do is honor the people who have died because of government overreach. The ones who've died because of the shutdown. Or the ones who are under alcohol or drug dependence now because of the shutdown. These are the people whose lives we're here to honor tonight. We'd like to invite you to visit Freekeen.com. Freekeen.com features audio, video, and blogs chronicling the transition to a voluntary society. Freekeen.com also has comments and discussion forums so you can be heard. Freekeen.com. I should be in Keene, New Hampshire with the Free Staters.